right, we're back. I did some light touching up with the. Uh, Hey everybody, we're here tonight with some uh, awesome resin 3D printed one piece uh, Predator cannons. We have uh, Alien vs. Predator, Predator 1, and we also have a um, Alien vs. Predator Requiem Wolf cannon. We, uh, as you can see, this cannon, nothing done to a name, sanded it yet, but we'll get to that sometime. We already sanded this one, spray painted it with hammered Rust-Oleum paint, giving a slight metally texture. And then we're going to use some acrylic paints and then maybe even a Rust-Oleum Chrome for our tarnished look on some of the high-end metal. But this one's already been painted. We're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to use some blacks. We're going to fill in some holes and try to make this look old and uh, tarnished. Start off by dabbing solid black in some of these crevices that we know we want to stay black. Nothing fancy here. I don't do much painting, but boys were asking me about it, and I thought, you know what? Let's just give it a try. I've done a couple of uh, small things before, but nothing cool like this. So we're going to give it a good old try here. Maybe give you guys some insight on what I do. It's not what everybody does, but I don't know. I have not got to watch any cool videos. Anybody else painting anything, but you never know. Everybody's different. Now, I do like to get to paint where I would want black paint to be left when you're rubbing it back off. I'm going to try to do a, I guess you call it maybe like a brush stroke look. Get to paint down in some of these grooves. Make sure the holes are filled. Just kind of give it a once over. Make sure there's really black black down in these hole holes. Make sure it's nice and Solid. So I'm gonna make sure it looks like it's deeper than what it looks. And then any of this tarnishing on the upper side, I don't care how solid black it is, as long as there's some in the crevices. So when we wipe away, it looks like it's old, tarnished, used, beat up, not fresh off the old block. Get some down in those holes. Some around the edges. I notice if you think your paint's a little too thick, which I guess that could be a thing, depending on what areas of what you're doing. Uh, just lightly water it down a little, and you can almost just smear it across. But I notice when you use the water, it's not as thick as it needs to be to be down in some of these holes where you want to stay. Oh yeah, there we go. Make sure we get in all these little slats. Like that right there. A little too wet. Soak up some of that moisture. Grab some more just straight up paint. No thinning. Make sure we get all these holes. No hole too big or too small. Alright, see how we're doing again. Get in the neck crevice, get in the neck crevice. Kind of like everything else I do, I don't claim to be no kind of professional, we're just trying to have some fun. Alright. So now you can look, almost looks like it's got a black cannon. Try to just screw it up after that nice sweet paint job. Get some down in those holes. Breaches. Alright, here comes the fun part. Now, with the dry cloth, you can either dab it off, or you can wipe it off. I like a mixture of both, so it gives that texture. Because when using that uh, hammered Rust-Oleum paint, it actually leaves a textured look. So now we just want to make sure we're taking it off. Oh yeah, gotta like them apples. There you see where we painted the whole thing black. Now we dab that top off. It leaves this top lighter and the background darker. Therefore, given that appearance, and it's been used, tarnished, whatever. 
You can take off as much or as least as you want. The only good thing about this, if you think you take off too much, you can always go back. Oh, you can really see it there. That looks real good. Another thing you can use to help speed up the process, heat gun. I'm going to see if we can go without using a heat gun for a little bit. But oh yeah, you can already see some of that dark in there. Fresh paint, black it. Now let's see if we knock some of our other paint out. We have to get a smaller one, but... Put some of that back in those holes. Oh yeah. And then again, let's try to maybe be able to even fudge it with a little bit of a Q-tip. Maybe even our finger, a little wet finger. Oh yeah. Now originally, this was about as smooth as a print gets. You do see some of these lines in here. We try to wet sand some of them down smoother, and it made it pretty much smooth as smooth as can get. But when we were done, this hammered rust -oleum paint actually comes textured like actual old hammered metal. Metal. So I mean, that's where we get all these little grooves. And sometimes with that paint, if you leave a little in there. Because I'm using my finger, you can actually leave some of it in those pit holes. Therefore, make it look way more pittier. Hopefully, we can catch it on the camera. And then try to leave some in some of these crevices in these holes. Need be. A little dab of water. Pull some of that off. Rub some of that out. Oh, yeah. And like I said earlier, it might be even better if we did it with a Q-tip. But, I said it's first time doing this, so I have no idea. Yes, I've done a mask before and some other small things, but nothing of scale or anything that's got to look cool when it's done. So we'll see. Daddy. So we'll see what we can do here. Good. We knocked out most of this, so we'll try it one more time, a little darker, maybe a little thicker of paint. There we go, that's a little thicker. Let's just trial and error. Put a little here, put a little there. Now if we can do this with our finger this time. Maybe it won't take off too much. Oh yeah, there we go. Now it's leaving the black in there. Just lightly try to touch it. Leave some of that, that natural rust oleum hammered metal look. And then right there, that's a little dry. Take that up with a little water. Oh yeah, can't beat it. Looking pretty good. So I said this will be a two part process. We'll wait till this gets pretty dry. Then we will try to um, stick some uh, silver highlights where it looks like metal has been getting rubbed on too hard by the uh, maybe rubbing up against his outfit or the trees or whatever he's doing. Now that I'm just putting on my finger lightly and it's lightly touching it. A little bit of black, a little bit of white, a little bit of water. Just enough that when it rubs off my finger, it lays in those natural pit holes. And then maybe use my dry fingers there to massage it in, massage it out. There we go. Oh yeah, starting to get the wing of this now. Get some back in that hole there. I should have found a smaller brush but that's all right there we go now we got that little hole so we can just oh yeah oh yeah there we go well, you start seeing that pitting come to life now 
Loosen that up. Maybe brush it with the length of the metal. Now sometimes depending, it might be better off to let it completely dry first, then try to take it off. But I'm just trying to work different ideas here because I don't know what I'm doing yet. It's kind of winging it. So all right, that's what's fun about art. Get some of these crevices. Get some in there. Some in there. This is a little thinner here. Brush is a little wet. So it's going on a little bit. Thinner light. Give me some smidge of water. Oh yeah, there we go. Hopefully I'm not pulling this up too hard, but we can't see it. Alright, I think we're about good on this part, this half. Alright, kind of give you a briefer what you've been doing. Or it's drying, and then what it looked like. So, you can almost see a good difference between there and there. So. Oh yeah, maybe just pull it one direction. Let me dab a couple of those off. I don't know if it's hard to see in the lighting, but you can almost see where that black's actually starting to seep in some of those natural little paint holes, giving it some nice character. For a paper towel, gets a little bit of wet, not too much. Oh, that might have been too much. So we can dab that out a little. Then yeah. try to lightly just lay over our pieces here. Oh yeah, there we go. Let's see if that's a little thick. You can see my fingerprint. Rub it off. And the good thing about letting it so much dry, it's a little harder to pull off, so now you can leave more if you need to. It's not enough or too much. Add a little bit back. Try again. Trial and error, trial and error. Oh, there we go. Yeah, the dabbing seems to work better on the top now. Oh yeah. Oh, you can see where some black really sticking in there now. It looks good. Looks more aged and metal. That's so why I said maybe on some of these corners. We'll put some of that silver, like it's the uh, metal's been banged and scraped off some things a few days. Really, really shiny from it being uh, newly rubbed raw. That's what you want to say. Let's see here. I guess we'll go ahead and continue. Give you an idea of what we're looking at here. Oh, let's go down here and do this a little again. That looks a little light. A little light. Now, I know a lot of the Predator movies nowadays, they, uh, can it seem to be more silver colored, which is fine. But this is Predator 1's canon, at least a mock up of it. It looks pretty close to me, close enough to hang on the wall with the Predator mask I have that I made when I was younger. And we're going to color it darker. So if you remember the old movie with Arnie, it was uh, pretty dark. 
I just want to keep it that same type of look. I don't want it all shiny and new. That's for sure. It's looking pretty good, I think. Well, I'll go ahead and roll it on over. Set it down, get the black. And dab that black in that hole. Make sure it's nice and thick. Each one of these bad boys is nice and thick. One more paint. Actually, see, we're running out of the black a little bit. Ah. So, we're not through that little bump. A little credit paint. Always get more. And it's cheap. And then I have to fill that hole in, fill that hole in, fill that crevice. Fill those two holes, uh, three holes actually. There we go. And like I said earlier, down in these, right where the two pieces of metal come together. It was like if he was looking at an old piece of steel. And you always know where it's tight spaces and don't get cleaned very well so therefore it's going to look pity, aged, old. That's right. It's nice down in those holes. More in the crevice the better. Ooh. Got four little holes here. There we go. Four along this line. Let's see if we can get some of that little hole. There we go. Dab it in there. Those poor brushes have seen better days. Sometimes actually when I'm doing this, get a better feel after I started. And the way this is starting to add up, I might actually go back and do the same method, which was slightly different than the front side, and redo the other side. What's nice about getting this stuff while it's fresh and new is and a good base coat. You always wipe the top coat off, try again. First you don't succeed, try again. Like I said earlier, this is trial and error. Just trying to figure out what works best for you or what gets that look. I've seen people use um, paper towels, newspapers, uh, material, different kinds, absorb the paints at different levels. Heck, I even like this using my finger. Get right down that slide. There we go. I did not bring the what you call it in heat gun. We might use it before the next round. Soft. Oh yeah. I don't know if you can see it or not, but I uh, watch it was black now that silver's on there. Just kind of like we dab this up. Leave some of that in there, especially in that if you can see in that camera or not. It's really sticking to that pitting around some of these letters, numbers, symbols, whatever you want to call that. All right, now we got to work it in there. That's some light dabbing. Try to make this too long, because we're going to be coming back here shortly. I to get some of this dry. And doing possibly the silver. Oh, now you can really see there. Get my finger lightly wet. Work that black back in. Get it softened up. There we go. It's really the paper towel. I'm leaving in the pit holes, but the finger will. Now 
Now I did find some of this blue metallic, extreme sheen, deco art, metallic acrylic paints. I might try to use it to stick down here where the uh, plasma caster gets really hot to make it look like it's uh, been like heat treated or overheated a few times. I'm starting to discolor this can. Do not know what that'll look like. I have no idea, but we will try here in a little bit and see what it looks like. For now, keep getting the rest of this off. Loosen it up a little bit. Even from doing other pieces that I've noticed that if you don't paint thick enough, you'll actually get a lot of extra recess lines like I don't have on this one, which thankfully, but you'll get a lot of uh, sandy lines. So try to maybe use that bigger, higher grit sanding paper. So when you're doing this, it won't leave hopefully too bad of lines. Like this here. Use my thumb to work that out. There we go. I'll just dab that off. Leave that in that pitting. Leave that in that pitting. Maybe take that piece up a little bit. Let's see here. A little more dabbing. Leave some of that black in there. Like I said, I want it to look a little aged and tarnished. And here we're going to make it a little more silvery. Well, more to darker color. All right, looks like we're getting somewhere now. Maybe a little more black in these. A little more black in these. Keep working it in those little bitty holes. Oh, definitely those three. How did I miss those? Oh, yeah. In there. There we go. Now, one, two, three. Yeah, as soon as we get this done, we'll prep the next and get ready and come back. touching it. Barely even want to grab it. Took it down here at the end. Oh, it took some off. Oh, let me go again. It's all right. Getting closer. Alright. Black without being black. Super thin. Ooh. Try to replicate that again. Try to put black in those pit pores. Oh, yeah, ain't too bad. Just real thin, washed out. You can almost see it sticking down in those pits. Let's see if we can do the top like that. Oh, finding it now. So we do this real quick. Oh, yeah, you can see it in those now. Got to get a whole bad boy. Washed out black. Oh, 
Oh yeah, I like the looks of that. Might not be everybody's cup of tea, but definitely our cup of tea. A little thick here. Not too much black. Oh, perfect. Oh yeah. All right, see this. See if we can see where this here is. When do we put this on here? Oh, one enough. All right. Need a little more black. Even oh. a black This bad boy. Little uneven dabbing. And we're making messes. Perfect. It's alright. Add to the antiquing. Oh yeah. I think we're getting somewhere now. I think all we have is this back piece. Back to the black black. Found some of these holes. Oh yeah, especially those. I feel like those will stick out. I have to get some reference pictures and see if those might be have to lit up by any specialty color. We will find out. I don't want it totally screen accurate, but I definitely want it close. At least enough to look good from the naked eye. Oh yeah, there we go. close to being done with this first time piece. Get a little more black in this hole here. See if I can do this with my finger without taking too much off again with that paper towel. Oh yeah, paper finger's much better. There we go. Swipe my all on our way. A little texturing. I guess I would come back, maybe we'll play with some of that blue in here and make it look like it's been uh, heat treated a few times. Being used a little too much. Fighting off those xenomorphs. Alright. See you here in a little bit. Alright, we're back. I did some light touching up with a uh, Q-tip and some black paint. We got some uh, chrome paint here. We're still in here two times ultra cover. Sprayed it in a Dixie cup, and um, what it is, we're going to start uh, putting some silver highlights on some of these pieces to kind of make them stand up a little bit. So, we'll grab our Dixie cup, a little spray, stick it in such, grab our Q-tip, get a little tibby tab, and then start lightly touching some highlighted areas. Kind of give a little pizzazz. We're gonna touch everything. 
I didn't like those pieces earlier with left silver. Maybe a little bit off of there. Make it stick us a little bit more. Lightly kiss the edge. Let's see here. See some of the silver pieces, little tabs, tabs. Just barely want to catch any of it. Now, in this one, I'm just going to try to touch this corners. So it looks like they've been scraped a little. And this one, oh yeah. Maybe a little down this, that, that, that. Maybe down a little of that, 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 that. Maybe a little on this edge. Maybe it's got some high wear. See there, I grab a little too much. All right. Maybe this one will kind of erase some of that off of there where we just touched where we weren't supposed to. All right, dull that down a little. Corners. Maybe the top of the old plasma caster gets a little roughed up a little. Oh yeah, there we go. Have a little in this corner. It's almost like having a dull paint marker. So it's sort of not really Rhyme or reason to it. Just trying to make it look old. Looks like our uh, normal paint ain't right through our Dixie cup. That's all right. Let's see how much we got in there. Eh, a little bit. I think we got enough little silver highlights. Smudge it in. Smudge it in. Maybe fake what we thought might be scratches. Suppose it's some of the old metal.
got something now. Next video, we're going to be doing a tandem where, give you guys a look at this bad boy. See our black leather texturing, pitted grooves, highlighted to silver. And like I said earlier, I wanted to try some of this blue metallic, a little bit of water. I wanted to stroke across the top of this bad boy, make it look like it maybe it's been heated up a few times from being used so much. And the metal's just colored with a hint of that blue. Seeing that video or not, kind of give you an idea. Just uh, discolored a little bit. I think this piece is looking pretty sweet. One thing I thought about maybe adding was maybe a little bit of uh, maybe uh, gold tarnishing, but I don't know. Maybe that might be too much. But there you have it. Just a couple of paints, brush. I said, if you think it's too much silver, blotch some of it out. Lightly wipe it back off, darken it up, lighten it up. It's whatever you want, it's your piece. There we go, see? You can rub some of that silver away with the old wet paper towel, but then still leave us some of that old black in that pit hole. Let's see how that blue is looking like. I ain't too shabby. Gives it a little bit of a... Try some actual solid blue. That might be too much. <laughs> it's a little bit. That's a bit much. I don't know. That does give it a... Kind of a glare. But a lot of times you see that. It's got like a yellowish tint and a reddish tint. Okay, so we can always just dab some off. Just enough to leave some in the highlights in there. So maybe by the neck and eye and the light just right, you'll see some of that tarnished blue. Oh yeah, there we go. Got ourselves a Predator 1 cannon. Kind of weathered and textured. The next piece we'll be doing it's going to be an Alien vs. Predator Super Shoulder Cannon. Wow. This one you see has been cocked back, getting ready to fire. Got the little twister and all that. We're going to give it a nice light sand and give it a sweet textured paint job like that. And then maybe we get that done. We have a wolf one. And then hopefully, from our good friend, we got a smart disc. Predator wise, we need a piece together paint, sand, and continue with that. So, here it is. Hope you guys like it. It was fun. Been wanting one of these forever. Finally got my hands on one. Got to paint it myself. So far, it's mine to an extent. Um, thank you, and we'll see you later.